naprawdę w zrozumieniu our groupy user group in Wrocław last night we had a meetup it became kind of like a domain driven design meetup in the end but what was great was that uh, several people involved in discussion about uh, the mistakes you can make by introducing domain driven design in your projects mostly focusing on rails projects and apparently well the, the common thing was that uh, it's quite a risk if you are introducing DDD in your projects too early when you are still uh, when you're still learning DDD. So I think like the lesson here is that if you're thinking about introducing DDD somewhere, start with your side projects, start with your I don't know products, maybe something that is not uh, in risk too much. And then once you have like some practices, you learn what's good, what's bad, then you can bring it into some more production projects or client projects or something like that. So I think that was one of the problems, that things slow down if you are just learning. But I think that's like, this is uh, something that you could say about anything that is new. Like if you don't know it, you can't blame DDD about uh, uh, this slowing you down. Uh, another thing was uh, actually probably more debatable whether it's okay to put DDD practices in those parts of your application where uh, where it sounds like it's crud but it's always difficult to say which of your application is actually crud and what does it exactly mean um, I'm not sure I, I was uh, for some time I was saying like okay some certain parts of the projects are crud certain bounded contexts are crud and that's okay to have them implementing the, like the Rails way with uh, CRUD active record. But then I've seen projects where certain um, areas were CRUDs based on this assumption. And I've seen that actually over the time they, they do grow. And I was wrong initially. And they actually need the events to communicate what is happening in, uh, in other places of the of the application, so other places are interested in what happens in the CRUD bounded context. Also, the CRUD bounded context is becoming interested in other parts, so it has to subscribe to other parts. So suddenly you have CRUD, but plus subscribing to events and publishing events. And also, if it stays that way, that well, maybe that's still fine, but then you have some more, uh, more requirements, and those requirements make the whole logic uh, more complicated and suddenly you are in place like in the usual place with Rails where you have to implement your business logic somehow in the Rails way, maybe with models, maybe with validations, maybe with callbacks, whatever, which is sad and I wonder if it's really a good thing to not introduce DDDs in those parts. Like I think the assumption here is that introducing DDD is expensive, but again, if you are good, if you are practicing it, I think you can quickly become as efficient with introducing the DDD patterns. I mean, like repositories, adapters, value objects, aggregates, even sourcing. Even sourcing, I think, is quite important here. And once you become efficient with that, then then the speed is like similar, and the testability is much better. And you know, the whole introducing any deeper logic is much much easier now because if you introduce the, the, the more complex logic to to an existing railway application, that's, that's a bit harder than you then you don't like working on this part. So I think it's still debatable. However, it was really great to see lessons of people uh, after using DDD for two or three years, which means we are maturing. I think we are getting somewhere with the DDD uh, patterns in the Ruby community, in the Rails community. So that's great. And I wish you to try uh, DDD in your project too. I think it's really worth it. Good luck.